Don't, don't you know I'm already busy? Why should I have to be learning more? We're moving into a new, and our next generation really in terms of technology and, and to be able to harness that technology to be able to implement systems in the business is uh, yeah, hugely valuable. So we focus on the free version of ChatGBT because if we can make the most. This is the Grow Your Clinic podcast from Clinic Mastery. You know, the, the AI tool is exactly that. It's a tool, it's not the, it's not the whole machine. It's not everything that, that actually does the work for you, but it's something that helps you get there quicker. When you put garbage into AI, you're gonna get garbage out. And so one of the first things that we need to do really well is... So Dan, we wrapped up session three of a five part series that we call Immersions for our Business Academy and Elevate members yesterday. We do these immersions a couple of times a year. And this one in particular is on harnessing the AI, artificial intelligence, advantage to scale up your systems and reduce the reliance on you. For those that are listening or watching us here, can you tee up what is an immersion and how does that work? Because it's kind of unique to Clinic Mastery. Yeah, what we found is there's real value in content and learning, but what we know is it takes time to implement things, right? And Often as a business owner, you've got so many things coming at you that when you learn something new, it can get quite overwhelming. Oh no, now I have to be doing all this on top of everything that I've been doing. So, you know, how don't, don't you know I'm already busy? Why should I have to be learning more, et cetera? So what we've done is created an immersion series, which is five sessions with two weeks in between each session where we get to immerse ourselves in one topic, but go really deep with action and implementation time between sessions to be able to actually just get started on doing something that you perhaps otherwise wouldn't do. And we found that over the years, building the, the, um, the rhythm of this immersion to be what it is now has been super valuable in, in immersing ourselves in new content and actually having a safe space to take some action towards it as well. It kind of came out of this idea that's used in the fitness industry, which is a boot camp. Uh, so sort of you'd have a 12 week immersion of sorts to really make meaningful progress by doing to your point. It's like, there's so much content. We have this ever growing mm. library of systems, policies, procedures to install in a clinic, but unless you're actually putting it into action, uh, you're not going to see the results. So this is an opportunity more for the doing. So this one, we chose to work on a really key a topic, which is systems, so that there's consistency in the business, that it reduces reliance on any particular person, in particular a clinic owner, having the know-how, it's documented, shareable, and best practice. And AI has enabled us to do this at a level that we just couldn't do before. It's turning months worth of work into a couple of days or a couple of hours. So can you tee up for us? Um, we've done three sessions now, the topics of those sessions and what have been some of the highlights and key insights that people have taken from these sessions? Yeah, well, AI has been around for a long time. A consumable level of AI though, a consumer version of AI, uh, for not so long. And so um, it's been great to see people are sort of starting to catch on to the tools that are out there. Some are a little scared to use them. Some are really embracing them and have already integrated them into daily life. Um, but what we've focused on is systemizing a next generation clinic. Um, you know, we're moving into a new, and our next generation really in terms of technology and and to be able to harness that uh, those, those, that technology to be able to implement systems in the business is, uh, yeah, hugely valuable. So, uh, we focus specifically on the free version of chat GPT, uh, because that's kind of the most accessible. I mean, there are so many AI yeah. platforms at the moment and even, yeah, even, and things are changing at such a fast rate, you know, from, I think when we were planning this, uh, we were about to sort of work using Bard and then Bard changed to Gemini almost overnight. And yes. uh, you know, there, there, so many things happening. Anyway, so we focus on the free version of ChatGPT because if we can make the most of that, then we can pretty much make the most of anything. Um, and so... I love yeah. that because really what you're covering and you're really good at this is 
kind of the skill set that you need to have or the mindset of how to use it so that it can be transferable across the different tools? Yeah, it's funny because it's it, it, it's one thing to sit there and type something to ChatGPT, but we've we've found over and over and again from the feedback that we're getting is, oh yeah, I've given it a go, but I haven't really known what to say or how to use it or what applications I could use it for. And, you know, people sort of dabbling with, you know, call it messages to their team, but in the voice of Shakespeare or something like that, just for fun, <laughs> rather than actually doing something super useful for the clinic. And so to discover some of those use, the use cases uh, specifically for clinics through this immersion has been, it's been exciting. And some of those use cases have been marketing systems, writing policies and procedures. Uh, and later on, we're actually going to be talking about recruitment uh, and also client journey related um, systems and structures as well. But let's start with this sort of model that you've got around the priming, the prompting, the polishing as part of that, that skill set, that mindset for how to use it. Because to your point, I've also found a number of people maybe be a little underwhelmed by AI. In actual fact, when you hear about how they've used it, it's more a reflection of their inputs than the system's ability to generate outputs. Yeah. One of the sessions at our Clinic Mastery Summit was around AI and garbage in, garbage out. You know, when you when you put garbage into AI, you're going to get garbage out. And so one of the first things that we need to do really well is know how to write a good prompt and to, to write the thing that you want. Yeah. The, the better, the better you put into AI tools like this, the better your output is going to be. And so to prime, to, to prime the AI tool with some, uh, some things first, you know, so uh, just, just things that you can do to prime your conversation to then develop the prompt and then once you get the output to polish it, to revisit it, and then to put your own layer of understanding through it and your own polishing of the words that are being used as well, being really key. In There's some that. great magic in um, each of those phases. Probably the one that I've learned the most from you has been in that polishing stage. And we'll get to that in a moment, but the headline being, don't just take kind of the first response you actually take it further and further and refine the responses to get some really brilliant outcomes. Mm. Now, you've got a couple of highlights, some, some viewable slides to share that form just part of this overall immersion that we deliver for our members um, and form the basis of some incredible AI prompting playbooks that we've released for them. Can you share with us, maybe for those that are viewing on YouTube, they'll be able to check this out. If you're listening in, uh, be sure to come over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, and also check out uh, some of the things that we share visually through the podcast here. But Dan, do you want to give us an insight into some of the specifics that you found useful, some examples of how you do some of these stages? So what, what I might do is I'll start with what makes for a good prompt. Yep. And then I'll go into, you know, how we've been able to use a prompt like this to repurpose content in that you may already have out there as well. So uh, I'll share my screen here and we'll start with the, the first thing, which is around persona. And as a small business owner, you already use many different personas. Um, you adapt how you speak to people or what you say or you know, when you're marketing, you might adopt a personality of someone who markets a business. When, you, um, when you're talking with uh, someone, uh, when you're onboarding them and going through their employment agreement, you might be taking on the persona of a legal advisor. You know, it's just naturally what happens. So you can actually ask ChatGPT to take on a particular persona and then use a specific tone of voice. Maybe that's professional or friendly or casual or engaging. Uh, reassuring depending on the types of conversations or the types of uh, things that you're doing with the tool. I found this this one in particular, Dan, really useful. We've done some brand work ourselves, but also for those clinics who've, who've explored or created their brand, maybe with a separate agency, and you're trying to find the tone of voice for your marketing or your mm. internal comms uh, or your, yeah, your systems, policies, procedures, 
and how you would describe that, um, this is a really good place for you to put those descriptors. Is that how you do it? Yeah, correct. You could, you know, if you have a brand voice, you know, maybe it's positive, friendly, reassuring, um, or maybe you have more of a professional, serious type voice to your brand. Yeah. You can adopt that tone of voice, and you can also play with it a little bit. You know, you can ask for things in the style of particular people that you that you look up to, or you can have some fun with responses in the style of a limerick or a haiku or or something similar as well when it comes to in clinic communication. The next thing is the request. Now you need to be very specific about what you want ChatGPT to do for you. So it's adopted a persona. Uh, you've asked for the specific tone of voice. Now we want to be clear on what the request is. And on the slide here, I've just got some examples, requests like developing a marketing strategy for attracting new patients to the clinic or um, skipping down a few, drafting a business plan for expanding clinic services or opening in a new location. So be very clear on what that request is. And the next one, who's it for? Uh, to direct the output for a particular audience. You know, if you're looking to contact referring doctors, for example, you might want it to, uh, to know that that's what this is for so that it can adopt mm. the right tone of voice, et cetera. And all of those things, the persona, tone of voice, the request, and the audience leads to the prompt itself. And we have an example prompt here of, well-crafted prompt that will help in, improve the quality of the output. Um, and it was at this point, I thought, well, we, we sort of rubbed our heads together and we thought it's great to be able to teach people how to prompt, but what are the actual copy and paste prompts that you could then use in your clinic? And focusing specifically on clinic policies, we came up with a prompt playbook that uh, adap uh, adapted, well, essentially here's the prompt to have AI tools help create the policies that are most commonly used in, in all clinics. And that was a super valuable resource. And just for those that are tuning in uh, just on the audio only, can you give it a sense for what this prompt looks like? Because we can see visually here for those that are watching, it's quite a detailed prompt, but just run us through some of the key elements of this prompt. Yeah, what a, I mean, this is a templated prompt that, that you're looking at here as a persona with an expertise in a relevant domain, craft a comprehensive policy or document or something like that for a specific organization or context and ensure that document aligns with whatever regulations or standards that might it might need to align with, be that, say, APRA regulations in Australia or if, uh, if you're part of the NDIS and it needs to be compliant with certain parameters there, uh, you can ensure the document aligns with that and addresses key areas such as and here you would list the specific aspects related to that purpose of the document that you're looking to create. You can then ask it to prioritize certain things to a particular desired outcome. Your goal, ChatGPT here, is to create a document that meets this uh, requirement or reflects our organizational values while achieving specific goals or objectives. Now, that can be quite a mouthful or a headful to think, oh, what do I actually put inside each of those square square brackets? So what I'll do is I'll share a conversation that I actually had with ChatGPT, which starts with a well-crafted prompt. And, uh, and this is what the prompt looks like. Um, I, in this case, what I wanted to do was ask ChatGPT to define an ideal audience for a piece of marketing content that we'd like to put out there. So I started with this prompt and I will read this out and uh, stick with me because I think if, if you can prompt well, uh, it's gonna help with the outcome, but you'll see what it does with the conversation as we move forward. So I said, hi, hi, ChatGPT. I don't know, do you, do you get that, Ben? When you when you type something into ChatGPT or an AI tool, you, so, you adopt a certain friendliness about you because uh, it's about to do a lot of work for you, right? Depends how many coffees I've had and what mood I'm in. <laughs> but yes, generally I try yeah. and be polite. <laughs> I like to use please and thank you as well. Hi, please take on the pers following persona, a marketing expert for an allied health clinic. The tone of voice is professional, knowledgeable, and strategic. The request here is to analyze demographic and psychographic data to refine the target audience for an allied health clinic in Australia. The audience is a clinic owner responsible for marketing their clinic. And here's the prompt. And I, and I do, I put all of that into the prompt, but the actual prompt itself is, hey, ChatGPT, I'm working on refining the target audience for an allied health clinic in Australia. 
The clinic offers physiotherapy, exercise physiology, and massage therapy. Can you analyze demographic and psychographic data to help me better understand our ideal patients? Specifically, I'm looking to identify key characteristics such as age, location, income level, health concerns, and lifestyle factors that would align with our services. Additionally, I'd love insights on how to tailor our messaging to resonate more effectively with this audience. Please provide detailed recommendations based on latest market trends and industry insights. Thanks. Now, of course, when I ask it to do uh, latest industry trends and those sorts of things, there are limitations as to what date the language model is trained to. Um, and that's where polishing the output is going to be really important to make sure that what you're given actually makes sense and is relevant. And yeah, one of the things I often say, and we often see this, and in fact, there was an article recently that showed that a lot of scientific studies, there's been a huge increases in certain words that are now being published in scientific studies. And they're words that perhaps weren't used as much before the, uh, the advent of AI tools to be able to help polish that scientific study. Um, but also some of those uh, key indicators that it was just literally copied and pasted, even the the sure I can help with that from chat GPT that it might <laughs> respond with was actually published in the scientific study too. So be careful not to just copy and paste the work, you know, still make it your own as you prompt it. But uh, we, we just had a position open here at click mastery and the, we had close to 800 applications in about 14 days and the amount of applications that came through and you open them up, you could see straight away, this is ChatGBT or some AI that's <laughs> written this because of the consistency in the words, those buzzwords that it had used, which on one hand, I was like, fantastic. This person is like embracing the latest technology. On the mm. other, I was like, they haven't quite mastered some of the polishing elements yeah. of I'm it. Sure to I'm sure we all know some of those buzzwords that ChatGPT responds with. A lot of people are doing a lot of delving, for example, where maybe previously they weren't doing as much delving. Let's but... delve into this. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, uh, okay, so here's my prompt. And I've asked ChatGPT to help me with an ideal audience for the clinic. Uh, it responded with a great analysis. I won't go into that. So what I did then was I said, well, thank you. Now I'd like to take this a bit further. Can you give some ideas for blog articles that might attract more ideal clients to this particular clinic? And ChatGPT returned with uh, 10 or so blog ideas or blog uh, yeah, outlines that would help to attract this particular demographic. So my next question, well, great. Let's, let's pick the first one. Knowing what you know already, from this conversation and using a similar tone to what we've been using, can you please write a 1000 word blog around the first topic that was suggested, which was the benefits of physiotherapy, a comprehensive guide to pain management and rehabilitation. And guess what? It did. This is good. Now, from that blog, obviously, there's going to be a lot of polishing that's needed to actually get it out there. But for the purposes of continuing this conversation, I said, thank you, excellent. Now I'd like to repurpose some of this content to be shared on other networks. Can you please draw from the article you've just written 10 tweetable quotes that can be used or exable quotes that can be used? Uh, so then what happened was ChatGPT came back and said, look, from this article that we've just written, here are 10 tweetable quotes that you could use that could be derived from that article. Fantastic. Now we're starting to repurpose the blog article that we've had done. And at this point, you might think, well, actually, I've done a blog before and I thought it was a pretty good blog. Maybe I could put this into ChatGPT and then ask it to repurpose some of the yeah. content. So the next one we did was the Instagram post. So let's look at Instagram here. Using the same article, can you please write some captions and image ideas for 10 Instagram posts? And it's great because what it's done is it's, done the captions, the hashtags, and an image idea. And I'm sure on other versions of these AI tools, it could even create the image for you as well. But um, I love that. And and to that point of the blog, I know a number of people will be saying, well, how evidence-based is that blog, you know, compared to how we practice in the clinic? Is it uh, aligned? Is it reflective of the latest evidence? What I've noticed a number of clinics doing is 
to your point on previous blogs, is uploading notes from their CPD or some of the research or journal articles so that it can reference it throughout and make sure that it is you know, as accurate as possible. But to your point, we're always going back and polishing the end result. But Absolutely. to write a thousand word blog in what, 10 seconds, 30 <laughs> seconds at max? I mean, well, that's taken a couple of hours. Like you're saving serious time. Yeah, it takes good prompting and you need to prime the tool so it knows you know what you're really looking for here. Uh, but uh, but it can work quite well. But the, then the key is, you know, what can we do with that piece of content? So it may not necessarily be about ChatGPT writing the blog for you, but how do we repurpose some of the things that are already out there that we've done ourselves? Mm -hmm. So we looked at tweetable quotes and Instagram, and then I thought, well, I want some more ideas. So I said, over to you, ChatGPT, what are some other ways that we could repurpose this content from the blog article that you've written above? And so it came back with a lot of good ideas. And I picked on one of them and I said, okay, great. I like the idea of an interactive social media campaign related to this blog article. Can you please help with the strategy, the steps, and write the copy to encourage engagement and reach for this? And so it did. Uh, Chat TV, GPT came back with a whole uh, plan for an interactive social media campaign about this. I That's said, awesome one... because, Dan, so many people say to us, you know, I just haven't got to getting my marketing uh, plan completed uh, or, you know, I've never had yeah. a marketing plan. And so you're engaging now the AI to create a plan for you. I mean, so quickly, uh, amazing. And it was interesting because it, it conceptualized this whole physio fitness challenge uh, that uh, that we would go to the social to socials with to engage people to become part of this and and so my next step was then to ask if it could help me to write an email that we could send to clients who might be interested in this particular challenge and so it did so uh, and then um, at that point I thought well there's probably another thing that we could do here uh, so I asked it to repurpose the content from the blog in a way that would be uh, useful for a podcast episode where we would interview one of our team members at the clinic for a podcast episode. And can you help with that? And it came back with a podcast episode title, uh, some questions that you would ask, the interview questions, some expected answers as well, and uh, what you could actually draw out for specific purposes. Uh, this is really useful for that. And then I thought, okay, well, if we're going to release a podcast, can you help with some promotional material across multiple platforms to share this particular episode? And uh, you can see how my prompts have become shorter and shorter and more casual over time as it's learnt what we're looking for in the conversation. And you can say, look, that wasn't quite what I was after. Maybe we can refine it like this a little bit if you get stuck along the way. But if you're on a good thread, you'll find that you can you can really move from one step to the next. And one thing that I found really useful as well is sort of coming back to this same thread, you know, a week or two later and continuing uh, with this same level of conversation instead of having to start a whole new thread. Uh, and so that gives you time to keep working on this. And I close this particular conversation with, thank you. You've just saved a lot of time. And it's true because this, through the, purpose, the purposes of this conversation being an example, it took about 10 minutes. But in that 10 minutes, I have a very large amount of content and quite a lot to do on my plate as well. Uh, but guided from the advice it was giving, uh, it, it certainly did would save a lot of time and, yeah. and give some really good insights in, into how this content can be used. And the potentially money, depending on where you're at in your clinic journey, you might be at a stage where there are team members looking for additional pathways in their career and they want to take on a marketing portfolio. Maybe it's an admin team member or a practitioner and they want to allocate half a day or a day to marketing. Often we see clinic owners go, well, I'm allocating a certain amount of time and money to this person for this role, but they're not really producing a lot all of a sudden now with AI, you're able to condense time and get a hell of a lot more productivity out of the time uh, yeah. that's allocated. Or if you don't have the resources financially to have someone else take on a marketing portfolio and you're doing it yourself, 
you can do so much more with the time that you do have for free, or even if you paid for the uh, the paid version, it's still peanuts compared to you know bringing on someone half time or full time in say a marketing capacity, let alone all the other use cases. Mm, absolutely, and to go along with that in terms of marketing, we uh, we did release a marketing prompt playbook which covers every perceivable uh, avenue of marketing that you would need to do in your clinic. And here are the actual copy and paste prompts that you could use to either get started on a conversation like that or uh, actually come up with the marketing material. And uh, yeah, again, I'd just say we have to really talk a lot about how we prime, how we prompt, but also how we polish what comes from ChatGPT. It use it as a tool, as a as a co-pilot, or something that's that's assisting you in getting you to your outcome quicker. But you still need to make sure that what you put out there is still you. It's still backed by science evidence. It's still actually in line with you know best practice. And you know the the AI tool is exactly that. It's a tool. It's not the it's not the whole machine. It's not everything that that actually does the work for you, but it's something that helps you get there quicker. And there's another thing that we can do to help get there quicker with mm -hmm. ChatGPT. And that's uh, around prompting and actually asking it to create the prompt for you in the first place. Should I go into this, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. I love that tagline. I think it was Andrew Zachariah on our team. He, he leads the Business Academy he shared that garbage in, garbage out at our mm. CM summit. And it's just such a good little uh, catchphrase because I've certainly learned from mistakes of putting a lot of garbage in and getting a lot of garbage out <laughs> that the playbook that you spoke to, Dan, enables not only you to do it consistently, like how you interact with ChatGPT or any other, but it enables you to transfer that over to your team and say, well, use this to help you get better, but do it in a consistent manner. So I love that resource of the the playbook uh, so that other clinic owners can also help their team do it consistently. But yeah, let's let's dive into how you actually reverse engineer. This was like a real meta moment for me <laughs> when you shared this of like, because it's it, I find it humbling. There's a real ego check of, I thought I knew what I was asking or the best prompt to give it. Until you go, well, actually, what if we got the system to do it? So, yeah, talk us through the reverse engineering of the prompt. Yeah, well, I thought I'd give you some insights into how you can use ChatGPT to reverse engineer your outcome and ask it to write the prompt for you. And I picked on a common situation in clinics, which was uh, mentoring a team member uh, and perhaps helping to uh, performance manage perhaps a low performing but important team member on the team. So... I started the question here, and I've got my uh, my screen shared. If you're if you're listening, but I'll read my prompts, and if you're watching, you can see ChatGPT's responses here in certain things. But uh, my prompt was, "What would be a good way to ask ChatGPT for advice on how to best uh, on how best to performance manage a low performing but but important team member?" Sorry, I didn't really read that out very well, but. Uh, Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm asking ChatGPT for advice on how to ask ChatGPT. And so it said, uh, it gave me an answer. It said, uh, well, you could ask something like, hey, I'm facing a challenge with my team. It gave me an idea of how I could ask this. I said, okay. And if I was to ask you to adopt a persona, tone of voice, uh, think of an audience, what would you suggest for this request? So this is going back to what we originally spoke about in crafting a good prompt. And ChatGPT actually responded by saying, well, you could use a professional and empathetic tone, um, given the sensitive nature of the content, your persona could be uh, that of a supportive and experienced mentor, you know, and it went through with some suggestions. So with that, I built a prompt. And so I said, okay, this is great. So without actually doing what this prompt asks, can you let me know if this is a good prompt for ChatGPT? Here's my prompt. And I went, Please adopt the following persona, supportive and experienced mentor or HR advisor, the tone of voice, the audience, the delivery as an in-person conversation, and then the request. And I closed this prompt off with, don't do what this prompt asks. Rather, can you tell me if this is a good way to prompt? And ChatGPT came back and said, yes, <laughs> the prompt has, is excellent. 
for for cry, for engaging ChatGPT in a conversation around this, and then it gave some reasons as to why it worked well. Now I didn't want to stop there because I thought, well, this is still my work, as you say, Ben, checking our ego, going, well, I've kind of asked it to do this, but uh, I don't want to accept just what I've got here. So I went one step further and I asked ChatGPT, thank you. In a minute, I'd love for you to rewrite my prompt in a similar format, but optimize to best practice. Is there any more information you need from me for this prompt to get the best results for me? I love and that question first off yeah. of like, how can I make this better? before we get the answer. Uh, that That's a terrific, very smart way to go about prompting. Well, it was great because ChatGPT responded with three questions. Mm. The first one being, well, are there any particular reasons or circumstances contributing to their underperformance? You know, maybe lack of training, personal issues, unclear expectations, those sorts of things. Uh, number two, what efforts, if any, have already been made to address this issue and what were the outcomes? And number three, are there any specific goals or expectations for improving performance that you would like to communicate to ChatGPT? Now, just on a meta level here, those are three brilliant questions to ask ourselves whenever it comes to an underperforming team member. Instead of going, oh, it's just you know this generation or it's just... Uh, this type of person or whatever it might be, we can often reach for what feels to be the most com convenient excuse. But I love how these questions challenge you to think, well, actually, is it more to do with you? Uh, is it to do with the lack of trading or, or some of those things? And would you like to consider those in this in this prompt? So I did, and I, I incorporated that into a response here. I said, okay, thank you. And again, this is just an example, but... Uh, I said, okay, thank you. I can give more context. This is a practitioner at our clinic who isn't rebooking their clients well. Their rebooking rate is low. We've tried to speak about this informally in the past, but the results aren't improving. I'd love to see their rebooking rate at 85%. It's currently 65%. Now, can we I just did this? I mean, we could get right into a conversation around what is a good rebooking rate and why should we be rebooking? You know, shouldn't it be around, you know, is there issues with over servicing here or being unethical with, with just having to rebook for the sake of rebooking? I don't want to get into that argument here because it, well, it's, it, it could take the conversation down a particular route. But uh, but just for the purposes of this, I just wanted to see their rebooking rate at 85%. It's currently 65%. Great. So uh, ChatGB said, great, thank you for providing me more context. With this additional information, here's an opti optimized version of your prompt. And guess what? ChatGPT wrote my prompt for me in the format that I asked it with persona, tone of voice, audience, delivery and the actual request. And this was a way to be able to get a really clear, good prompt from ChatGPT by outlining the overall outcome that I'm looking for and asking it to you know, have a conversation with me, ask me some questions about what further information would be needed to make this a good prompt and then for it to actually write that prompt. And of course, I finished with a thank you and I'll use this prompt in a new thread so through reverse engineering, you can use ChatGPT to help you get the prompts that you're then going to use in ChatGPT, perhaps in a new thread. Um, you now, will we need to actually use a new thread to, to go ahead with this? Perhaps not. You know, maybe from here you could say, all right, well, here's my prompt. <laughs> can you do this, please? And it would continue the conversation. But uh, for fun, you might like to start that in a new thread and uh, and take take where it goes from there. So a lot of cool things you can do with this, Ben, to save time. I love it. I've used the app on my phone, uh, the OpenAI app for ChatGPT. And I've used it in particular when I haven't known what the prompt is, uh, but I've got all these thoughts going through my mind. And I've started with a version of this. I can definitely make it more structured as you've outlined here, but I'll say, I need your help to create a prompt here's what's going through my mind right now, you know, articulate mm. the problem, uh, the opportunity, the thing that we're trying to solve for and some parameters around that and say, can you provide uh, the prompt for us to explore this in a further discussion? And I found that really useful when uh, maybe I can't type out, I'm not really sure what I need to write, 
but just verbalizing it has been a useful way for me personally. It's it's interesting to see too that even perhaps one of the newest in employment categories as prompt engineers has come up is already being disrupted in being able to engineer your own prompts <laughs> through through these tools. Uh, but what this led to was then um, so. I guess coming back to the immersion itself, in the first immersion, we spoke about how to prompt well and, and the elements that make a good prompt. And we spoke about prompts for clinic policies. In the second, uh, and then the challenge was to use this prompt playbook to update or create some policies for the clinic and to do it. And people shared some uh, some of the things that they were able to do uh, outside of anything that we'd suggested as well that was just incredible uh, to see certain things happen. The second Session was around the marketing and how we can repurpose that content and then um, looking at that marketing playbook as well. And uh, from, from here where we can reverse engineer a prompt, this was our third session, we were looking at what are the different things that you could use ChatGPT for in your business. And so we looked at business planning, um, you know, so creating business plans for finance applications or lease applications or even awards programs, those sorts of things. Uh, we looked at personal goal setting and desire statements and how we can use ChatGPT to help us to uh, interview us on uh, what are our desires around each area of life and, and how we could create some I am statements that project forward, say, three to five years from now and say, These, this is where I'm heading. You know, this I Really am powerful in mentoring team members. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah using it as a mentoring tool. Uh, we looked at clinic communications, in-clinic communications, and how um, you could use ChatGPT to help with your, say, reminder messages or your um, cancellation notices or billing inquiries or uh, how we acknowledge and, and encourage referrals or um, ask for satisfaction surveys or feedback requests and all of those little things that you can use ChatGPT for in your clinic. And uh, the the final one we looked at was team management and help with difficult conversations. So establishing and setting clear foundations and expectations with your team, how to handle difficult conversations, even using ChatGPT to ask for um, general feedback or create uh, create frameworks for conflict resolution and mediation in the clinic and uh, and those sorts of things too. So there's so many avenues and so many applications for this. And I think part of being a next generation clinic is being open to some of these new technologies and looking at how you can just give it a go and see where this, where it can be useful in your clinic and uh, where we're going in our next session. This is really exciting is, is now that we've laid the groundwork for how we can best use some of these tools, we're going to look at the actual platforms that you can implement in your clinic. There are AI platforms that help take your patient notes for you or help write reports. There are AI platforms for all sorts of in-clinic specific uses. And it's very exciting to delve into those platforms and how to make the most from those and, uh, and continue down that path of systemizing the next generation clinic from there. And then future immersion on your recruitment agency. One of the challenges a lot of clinics face is their ability to attract A-grade talent. Uh, it's a competitive market out there and reframing and using AI to set your clinic up as a recruitment agency. I'm really looking forward to that in a, a couple of months time. And then later on in the year, we'll also be talking about the client journey and providing a consistent experience, training and um, experience to the practitioners as well as the clients. So really uh, an AI themed year across the Academy and Elevate, really looking forward to next session. Thanks for sharing those insights, Dan. Do you have any kind of headlines or, or key takeaways for people and perhaps early on in their journey with AI, we've shared some really great specific details here, but how to go about approaching it? What's kind of some next best steps after tuning into this podcast? We asked on uh, one of our recent sessions, you know, how have you used this, you know, in your own clinics or how have you used the information? And some responded with, well, I hadn't used anything before, so now I am. Brilliant, you know, just even just breaking down the barriers of unknown and actually getting started with something. You don't even need an account to get started with ChatGPT if you've never used it before. Just open it up and type something into it. Say, start with hi, 
And uh, maybe if you've got a challenge or something you're looking to do in your clinic, just open a conversation with it and get it going. If you're using ChatGPT on a regular basis, if you're really okay with it, just uh, recognize the opportunities for other things that you can do to really refine and, and, and uh, you know, save time in other ways. I think a big key to all of this is, uh, is it, it's about reducing the reliance on you as a business owner. Yeah. And you can empower your team to adopt these technologies as well. Um, you can, if you're worried about the safety or having a policy around uh, data security and what information gets shared, you can ask ChatGPT to create that policy for you as well. Uh, so you can use that in your clinic, but, um, but look, yeah, for all the, uh, for all the opportunities that are there, I just think it's really useful to just give it a go. I think uh, the best way to start is to just start. And hopefully this uh, podcast has helped with perhaps a, a few insights into some of the things you can do and maybe breaking down some of those barriers to getting started. And of course, uh, we love holding the hand, holding hands and, and uh, making sure that uh, we're able to get the most from it. Great insights. Great insights. I think being able to share those playbooks with your team, as you said, so that they're empowered in their role to also contribute, whether that's through marketing systems, et cetera, uh, you create uh, a next generation of clinic that is on the forefront of tech. And um, I just love the continued level up of the community to ask good questions, be okay to uh, be vulnerable, be uncomfortable to have that humility and uh, ego check as we go into using it. I've had that experience. I know you have too. And look at how can we be better every day? That really speaks to mastery. Uh, mm. So I, I think that's awesome. At the end of each session, we're always keen to ask people, what is your key insight? Because we say, you know, wisdom is distilled learning. It's all well and good to have all these different things in your mind, but what is the kind of the one thing that you're like, I'm going to latch onto that and I'm going to implement it. Uh, maybe Dan, you've got a couple of insights on what has been most valuable about the immersion for members. Yeah. I think um, in terms of key insights and what people have been able to do, you know, we've seen people be able to get funding for their client where otherwise they haven't been able to because they've been able to uh, write a report better. And, and I, I really, I'm really thrilled to see that there are some great outcomes for clients yeah, that are cool. coming from this, which is what we're all about. And then from a, um, you know, the, the structure of the immersion level, you know, one, one person came back and said, look, the most valuable thing about this, it's a multi-session immersion. It's over an extended period, hearing repetition of the most important themes and having the opportunity to action between sessions. It's much more valuable than one really comprehensive session. And uh, yeah, so it's been great to see that sort of feedback. It's also great to see the community supporting each other and sharing what they've done. And here's the prompts that I've used to create this. And um, it's really built that momentum behind uh, people adopting these new technologies. Awesome. Well, you'll find a recording of this over on YouTube. If you've been tuning in and listening, awesome. Thank you come over to our YouTube where you're going to see those slides and those prompts that Dan has created. Also hit subscribe. We're continuing to add more content on YouTube with practical tips, advice, and how to's. So come and join us over on YouTube and you'll find all of the show notes and recording here over at clinicmastery.com and just navigate to the podcast section and you'll see all previous episodes and guests there. Dan, thank you so much for your insights today. I'm sure we'll cover more of the progression of AI throughout future episodes of the podcast, but really appreciate what you've contributed today. Thanks for having me. It's a privilege to be able to speak with everyone here today. We'll see you on another episode very soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Grow Your Clinic podcast. To find out more about past episodes or how we can help you, head to www.clinicmastery.com forward slash podcast. And please remember to rate and review us on your podcast player of choice. See you on the next episode.